Hello Clat aspirants, so here we are with our RC series of English that is reading comprehension. There are a lot of you know hue and cry related to how the comprehension has to be done since there are going to be 5 to 6 passages in Clat. Let us start with our first passage in this series. Now this is a passage and uh, before I read the passage, this question with the students is that the questions the students put up is that do we have to read the passage first or we have to refer to the questions first. Do we have to you know analyze the uh, passage uh, point by point or paragraph or we have to do this. See this I leave to you as I tell you there is a, you know mind mapping and there is a concentration which you can do. But if you are a very fast reader I would suggest you read the passage first, go through line to line, but in a very quick go. And then if you are going for write, if you are going for a sh very long passage for the a lit section and the others, in that case do not read the passage thoroughly, but just go for the questions directly. The method as per suits uh, person to person varies, right. So I am begin with the passage here. The passage starts with the pioneers of the teaching of science imagine that its introduction into education would remove the conventional that is the old methods, artificiality and backward lookingness uh, which were characteristics of classical studies. But they were gravely disappointed, you know the pioneers thought so that this is going to happen, but they were disappointed. So too in their time had the humanists thought that the study of the classical authors of the original would banish that means destroy completely remove at once the dull pedantry and superstitions of medieval scholasticism. The pedantry is the same stereotype orthodox rules that have been going on. The professional schoolmaster was a match for both of them and has almost managed to take the understanding of chemical reactions as dull and as dull and as dogmatic an affair as the reading of Virgil's Aeneid, right. So, he found the book very boring and dull compared to Virgil's Aeneid. Moving further in the passage, the chief claim, you know paragraph change, the idea would change thoroughly. The chief claim for the use of science in education is that it teaches a child something about the actual universe in which he is living in making him acquainted with the results of scientific discovery and at the same time teaches him how to think logically. You know when you are using science you think yes logically in a rational manner and inductively by studying scientific method. A certain limited success has been reached in the first of these aims, but practically none at all in the second. Those privileged members of the community who have been through a secondary or public school of education may be expected to know something about the elementary physics and chemistry of a hundred years ago, but they probably know hardly more than any bright boy can pick up from an interest in wireless or scientific hobbies out of school hours. Now they have told you about the importance the scientific method plays and how it could be very rational and inductive. Moving further in the passage, the word limit is the passage has been taken from the social functions of science by John G. Bernal. As to the learning of scientific method, the whole thing is palpably a farce. What is farce? It is a funny story, just an absurd thing. Actually for the convenience of teachers and the requirements of the examination system, it is necessary that the pupils not only do not learn scientific methods, but learn precisely the reverse of it. That is to believe exactly what they are told and to reproduce it when asked. Whether it seems nonsense to them or not, the way in which educated people respond to such quackerness. You know, read fast when you have to stop, when you do not understand, give a minute, give a thought to it. The quacks are those people who are frauds, who are charlatans as spiritualism or astrology, not to say more dangerous ones such as the racial theories or currency myths shows that 50 years of education in the method of science in Britain or Germany has produced no visible effect whatever. The only way of learning the method of science is the long and bitter way of personal experience and until the educational or social systems are altered they are totally changed. To make this possible, the best we can expect is the production of a minority of people who are able to acquire some of the techniques of science and still smaller minority who are able to use and develop 
them. You know, you got the gist of the passage, the basic idea and that helps you to do the questions further. Let us start with the questions. The first question, in the statement, the professional school master, when he talks of the professional school master, he talks about him was more than a match for both of them. See, the question asked is both of them. The word both refers to. So, who is this both? First thing, using your elimination method, the classical scholars is just one single entity. So, this cannot be both of them. The earlier teachers of science is also one single entity, cannot be both of them. Now, when we turn to the two points that is left B and C, the forerunners of scientific education and humanist, you have scientific education because we are talking of them and the humanist. The students of the school master and his fellow teachers, we have nothing mentioned about the fellow teachers in the passage. Yes, so the answer is very true, the forerunners of scientific education and the humanist. You can see the whole passage is about science, so it is very easy to determine the answer. Moving to our second question, according to the passage, what is the reverse? The question asked is, what is the reverse of the scientific method? Do you know scientific method is based on cause effect relationship, the rational thinking, the right thinking, there is a reason for that action that is called the, now we have to give a reverse to it. To be rational and question every observation, this is scientific method. So, this is not reverse. To learn through personal experience, now we have personal experience, but personal experience is subjective in nature, right. So, this cannot be. Anything that is being followed in Britain and Germany, we have nothing mentioned about it as such and it cannot be a scientific method. To accept as true the knowledge in textbooks without questioning, so you can see this easily seen without questioning it in any manner. If you do not put up a question, whatever is written in books, whatever is written in things, you are just taking it correctly, that would be reverse of scientific method, right. I hope it is clear to you. Moving to the next question. We have kept in mind the time limit, the word limit and everything giving you a replica of CLAT. The third question, a certain limited success has been achieved in the first of these aims, but none in the second. What does the author imply through this statement? This is a question again prominently asked not only in English, but also in CR. What is the meaning of this particular statement? What is the writer trying to say? The first point, the school master has proved both the earlier teachers of science and humanists completely wrong. Has he proved that the teachers were totally wrong? No, we cannot say so. It is a scientific uh, thing, we cannot have anything about it. Only privileged members of the community have been benefited, only privileged people are given the chance to do so. The students of science have gained, the students in science ke, they have gained some scientific knowledge, they have gained some scientific knowledge about it and uh, they are uh, being able to un, uh, develop the faculty clear and rational thinking, right. So, that is what he is saying initial limited success, that means a, uh, they are talking about the rational thinking, it has nothing to do with the aim of the point, right. And when we talk of the D point, science should be something which is taught through the ra radio and wireless, we have nothing about it. So, the idea becomes crystal clear, yes the answer is third C. Moving on to the fourth question. Which of the following statements best sums up the idea of the passage? What is the passage trying to say? You know, when you have the passage, just recall in your mind in one minute, in one line, what is the passage about, mainly about. The pioneers of scientific education, of course, they are talked about and have been greatly disappointed. If you go for the first paragraph, the first two lines, it is mentioned, but is it the whole thing that has been discussed? Persons who have received secondary or public education hardly know more more than a bright student who has learned through practical experience, we have nowhere at any place secondary and public education. So, we cannot take up this is a point of objection. This 
is the way we eliminate the things. This is given, but it is not a complete point. Learning of scientific method is a farce. Of course, it is a farce. We have talked about farce in the passage. Scientific teaching has been unable to renew itself. It has not given a new look to itself. It is not renovated itself and still follows the conventional pattern that leads to acquiring some knowledge, but to development of scientific temperament. You can see every point of scientific teaching, what has it done and what has not been done has been covered up. If we compare the three which have been discussed, this is a more broader form, complete and imprecise form. So, the answer is yes, D telling. Moving to our next question, that is question 5. We have observed the line that has been italics in the passage and which figure of speech has been used. Let us see the line which has been italics in the passage. Right. If you could see, uh, it could make out a difference to you. This is italics line. The professional schoolmaster was a match for both of them and has almost managed to make the understanding of chemical reactions as dull and as dogmatic an affair as the reading of Virgil's Aeneid. So, you can see this as dull as, right? That means, there is a comparison with the use of the word like as so. Which literary device? Right, referring to our question back. So, the answer for the question when we make a comparison between two things with the use of the word like as and so, then we call it yes, we call it a simile. Anachronism is not following the time order zone, cacophony is bad sound, and cosera is a gap, pause, or volta in a program. Synonym of pedantry, you know pedantry was very orthodox, very uh, stubborn, very stickler kind of thing, not changing your viewpoint is pedantry. So, the answer becomes crystal clear that is dogmatic, it is very mulish, it is dogged, it is intransigent, stickler, rigid, a person who is not ready to change, unadaptable or inflexible. Right. So, you have seen we have been able to do the six questions thoroughly from the passage. It took takes us hardly 4.5 minutes or 4 minutes to do so. Since I was explaining simultaneously, so it may have taken me double of the time, not because in the exam you have to explain anyone, if you just fill your OMR sheet. So, keep yourself tuned with the passages more and more practice of the passages, so that you are able to attempt well. Right students, thank you for today.